now that we know how important the correlation coefficient is, it's important that we can calculate it ourselves if we had to from a data set rather than just kind of gauging it from a scatter plot. So that's going to require us to do something which is called turning the diagnostic on on our calculator. This is a one time only thing. You don't have to do this again once we do it this one time. I'm going to show you a couple ways to do it, however. So there's the method that I gave you in the notes, um, which says you go to catalog. So second, zero, see the catalog? And you scroll down to the Ds, or if you're really crafty, you hit alpha, see the D above the X to the negative one button? Alpha D, alpha D, and it'll kind of get you down there. And then you scroll down. You basically need to get down, down, down to the diagnostic on. It's in there eventually. Oop, there it is. Press too many downs. So once you have the little arrow on diagnostic on, you press enter, and then you press enter, and it'll say done. Now the other way to do it is if you hit the mode button, and then let me look for it, it's in here. Down at the very bottom, it says stat diagnostics down here. See how it's off and then it's on. So because I just turned them on, it's on. If I set it to off, they'd be off, right? But I don't want to do that. I want on. So that's another way to do this in the mode. Let me go to the other calculator just so you guys can see it there too. That's fine. All right, clear. So if I went to mode, again, I have the newest operating system. So there it is, stats diagnostics. See how it's on? That's what you want. If it wasn't on, let's say it was off over here, then you use your little arrow key and go to right to on. The other way to do it is the same way we did in the other calculator, which is catalog. And then you press down long enough until you hit diagnostic on. And then you go down until you hit diagnostic on and press enter, enter, and it'll say done. This is a one time only thing. Once you have turned diagnostic on, you never really want them off. So leave them on forever. Enter, enter, and it'll say done. Beautiful. So that's all you need to do. Do it on either calculator. doesn't matter which one. I personally like the mode operation. That's kind of nice, but um, it looks different for the different calculators. But it's in there. It's stat diagnostics. You want the, them to be dark for the on. All right, then we can quit to get out of here. So second, quit. And again, you don't have to do the mode method. You could do the catalog method, catalog or mode, either way. I explained the catalog here because it's a little bit easier to put into pictures. But if you can do the mode way, then knock yourself up. All right, so then once we've done that, then we have to enter your data and all that stuff. Now I've got a data set right here for my next example. It has the list, um, it, this table lists the percent of students who receive free or reduced price lunches compared with the percent who pass the math portion of the state exam at public schools in Sandusky, Ohio. So here's a school, it had 29% of its students on free or reduced lunch and 66% of its students passed that math test, like a statewide math test. Then here's another school that had 60% of its students on this free reduced lunch and 53% passed their state math tests and so on. We want to enter these data into our calculator. So I'm going to go to stat, press number one for edit or enter, either one. I'm going to clear out all my old stuff. I don't need any of the stuff from a free previous video I made. So go up and clear it out. And then I want to enter in my data. So let's see here. There we go. So I'm going to type 29, 29, and so on. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to finish filling out these data. One second. All right, there we go. I've got all the data in there um, right into the calculator. Beautiful. Now what do we need to do? Um, oh, they want us to answer what is the explanatory and what is the response variable. So let me fill those out real quick. There we go. So we have the explanatory variable is the percentage of students that are on free reduced lunch. It's your X, right? And then the response variable is the percentage of students that pass the state math exam. Now, why is it working that way? Well, a variety of reasons, but one of them is that in education, free reduced lunch is one of the markers of poverty. Now, whether that's a fair measure of poverty or not is obviously outside of the scope of this course. But what we're saying is, look, if students have, if your school has 60% of its students on free reduced lunch, 60% of its students needing public assistance to have food, then chances are they're kind of stressed out and, and might not pass their math tests as well. At least that's the theory. And we're going to see whether or not the data back them up. 
Now we're going to compute the correlation coefficient with our calculator because nobody wants to do this by hand. So once you have your data entered, you press STAT, then you move to the right to calculate, and you want number four, which is linear regression. So you either press the number four, or you can kind of move down to it with your arrows and press enter. If I just press four right now, it'll automatically pick linear regression. All right, now it wants to know what was my X and what was my Y. X is your explanatory, X for explanatory, get it? And that was an L1 for us, so second, one L1 and the Y list was in L2 so you want second two if it's not already L2 mine is so I will just move off of it frequency list in our course will always be blank that's kind of a more advanced option than we're using and we're also generally not going to bother with storing the regression equation in an algebra class that's something you want to do but for our purposes it's not really necessary so I'm just going to go down to calculate and press enter and then it runs it right here. Now we'll worry about what the rest of all this is later because all of the rest of this, um, the two top numbers are coming in 4.2 and R squared is in 4.3. But for right now, what we care about is R. R is negative 0.688 or so, right? R, remember, is your symbol for your correlation coefficient. So there is your correlation coefficient. It's negative 0.688. All right, so what type of relationship seems to be happening? Well, that's a negative, and is it moderate or weak? Let's go back and look. Negative 0.688, if you, that's right in this blue zone right here, kind of close to negative 0.7, so that's a moderate negative relationship. So let me type that up. And then I want to describe what that means in the situation. There we have it. So this is a moderate negative linear relationship. That means that as free reduced lunch goes up, then your percent that pass math goes down. That's what a negative relationship means. It means that as your X increases, oops, stop swirling so much, sorry. <laughs> My mouse is being possessed. As your X increases, then your Y decreases, right? So as free reduced lunch goes up, passing math goes down, which is what we were just saying a second ago, that if you have increased poverty, hypothetically speaking, you have lower math scores. Now it does not have to be that way. That is just one relationship. All right, now why is this observational, not an experiment? Well, for a variety of reasons, but one of it is that the researchers did not control the poverty and wealth of a school, right? They just kind of walk into the school and observe how, what percentage have free reduced lunch and what percentage pass, right? Free reduced lunch in a school and what percentage pass the math exam, right? They're not controlling that part, right? They're just seeing what what already occurs, right? They're merely observing what already exists. Oh, I guess this part is really the observation part. So they're observing what already exists, i.e. the percentage that passed the math exam, right? And the percentage on free lunch, right? And percent on free lunch, free reduced lunch. Reduced means it's reduced in price. All right, so they didn't say you, you know, child A, we're going to make you have free lunch. They didn't do that. They just came in and say, does child A have free lunch? Did they pass their math test. Does child B have free lunch? Did they pass their math test? That kind of thing. They're just observing what already occurs. But because they're just observing what already occurs, they can't say that free reduced lunch causes lower math scores. They can't say, hey, this child gets free lunch. Therefore, they will automatically fail. That's not what this means. It means that the children on free reduced lunch are having something going on that is affecting them that also is affecting their math tests, right? But the free reduced lunch percentage could be happening for other reasons, so, or, and so could the math tests. So there, there are some other variables called lurking variables that might be affecting what's going on, namely income level of the parents, education level of the parents, number of jobs, affordability of the housing, healthcare, et cetera. So let me type that up. Um, in other words, it's not that um, free reduced lunch causes math, lower math scores. It's that, comma, is that um, free reduced lunch and lower math scores happen together due to a variety of factors. 
So there might be a lot of things going on in the lives of these children that have free reduced lunch that have nothing um, to do with necessarily the free reduced lunch, but have a lot of things to do with other things, right? Or they might have, let me put it this way, they have something to do with free reduced lunch and the math scores. It's, there are other things that are affecting both of these. And so they're going together hand in hand, but not because the free reduced lunch causes the math score. It's not like you take a, a kid that didn't have free reduced lunch and you force them to have free lunch that they'll automatically start failing their math class. That's not how it works, right? That's what causing would be, right? What, what's going on here is the parents have lots of jobs. The parents have a lot of, um, have to worry about income. They have healthcare issues. They have maybe educational issues, that kind of thing. Which leads to the last important point about correlation, and it's very important, which is that correlation is not causation. Um, just because two variables are correlated does not mean that one causes the other, right? So I have from over here the lovely Jason Love um, uh, cartoon, which he very kindly sold to me um, for using for using this purpose. And you can see that the cop is standing outside the ice cream shop and he's saying, statistics show that crime rates rise with the sale of ice cream. Now do your part and move along. And he's actually correct, right? Statistics do show that crime rates rise with the sale of ice cream, but it's not for the reasons you think. Right? It's not that ice cream sales cause crime rates. That's not what's happening. What is happening is a lurking variable, which is the seasons, weather. People are far more likely to get into trouble and cause havoc and get into fights and go steal things in the summertime because it's warm, right? In the winter, you could get your you know, snow tracks covered and things like that. And who wants that? No burglar wants that. So the weather, the seasons are affecting both. Weather is affecting the ice cream sales and weather is affecting robberies and crime. It's not that the ice cream's causing the robberies and crime, it's that they're going hand in hand because of some other factor. All right, and the free reduced lunch example, please, there's a million of them, right? So you could ha be having all sorts of things going on with those children. So the education of the parents, the money of the parents, um, healthcare, et cetera. I'm just gonna put dollar signs for money, et cetera. Now watch out for this whenever you hear things like this, because you'll hear things like a new study finds a link between aspirin and cancer, or you know, you know, details at eleven, or vitamin D and Alzheimer's. Is there something going on? Blah blah blah. You know, and coffee. You know, does coffee cause things? Does coffee not cause things? You know, eating breakfast is that good for weight loss or not good for weight loss? Who knows? Whenever you hear those kind of studies, they're usually talking about observational studies. And so the reporters reporting on them are doing a terrible job, quite frankly, of being careful about causality. There might be a relationship between breakfast and weight loss, but it might have nothing to do with causing weight loss. It might be that the people that were automatically losing weight were also eating breakfast for a variety of reasons that had nothing to do with the breakfast causing the weight loss which leads me to an important point for all of us to keep in mind. Whenever you hear or read on the internet or whatever um, about health cares, you know, like coffee is good for you, coffee is bad for you, butter is good for you, butter is bad for you. I mean, food and, and weight and health tends to happen this a lot, but it's true for other articles as well. You wanna look for articles that discuss the cost of the treatment. How expensive is this treatment? Now, in the case of aspirin or coffee, not so much, but in the case of a new drug for treating diabetes, it could be very high. Do they explain the size of the potential benefit and the size of the potential harm? Do they talk about, and this could kill you. I mean, if you end, watch the end of those commercials for pharmacy, pharmaceuticals, for new drugs, they often say at the end, and this drug could cause, you know, mouth dryness and death. You know, <laughs> they'll say at the very end, and it's like, whoa, you know, you have to be careful about what your potential harm of the new drug is. But it might be for something that's so important, you know, if it's going to cure Ebola, then we'll take it, you know. So what's the potential benefit versus what's the potential harm? Um, do they evaluate the quality of the evidence or do they just put it out there? You know, studies show that aspirin and cancer are linked. Okay, what does that mean? What's the quality of this evidence? How linked are they? How strong is it? What did they do? Was it just in a mouse or was it in a person or what? Do they have more than a single source, right? Do they looking at more than one article, more than one study, or is it just one study from some crazy, you know, scientist trying to get a grant somewhere? And do they compare new approaches with the existing alternatives? Because sometimes the new drug costs a fortune, so maybe it's not worth it. All right, we're done with that section. Enjoy the cartoon because it's very appropriate. <laughs>